G'day Aspiring Engineers, this video is a revised version of the second of 16 basic tutorials in Fusion 360. This is what it looks like and this is the drawing. If you haven't downloaded that already go ahead and do that and uh, if you haven't got a second monitor like I have there go ahead and print it off and hold it in your hand while you're following along with the tutorial. Stick around. I'm going to demonstrate this the same way that we did it last time, which is a good way. But I'm also going to show you another way, which is quicker and more efficient. Work smarter, not harder. And this is a great way for you to learn, but you're going to have to practice it. It's going to have to become a habit so that it becomes part of the way that you work. We'll get onto that in a minute, but we'll do the first one first. First thing I'm going to do is save the document. I'm going to put this in 16 parts and we're going to call it two. Save it, and that's before we've done anything, you notice. What I'm going to do is turn on the origin. There's the little eye icon. You can see the, um, the point of origin and the three reference planes and the three axes, which represent 3D space. Okay. Uh, the other thing we should do every time, we should always make sure that we've got capture design history on so that we get all the features appearing in the timeline down below. So let's do the second part in the 16 tutorials the first way. Okay, the ordinary way. I'm going to start a sketch, that is create sketch. Then uh, I'm going to choose the reference plane, which is the, the X and the Z reference plane. And you can see which ones they are by looking at the view curve here. Z is the vertical one. X is the red one, the one with the red and the blue axes. Then it turns to face us. And of course, if yours doesn't turn to face you, it's because of preference settings. Get the PDF, the free PDF download and get the preference settings. Alrighty. Here's how we would normally do this. I'm going to get the two-point rectangle. That's the second tool in the Create panel at the top, far left there. I'm going to click once over here, and now I'm not going to click again. I'm going to take my hand off the mouse. It's still there, and you can see that blue focused fields on the width of this thing. And uh, looking at the drawing, you can see that what are we looking for here is 48. And then hit the tab key, still not going to touch the enter key. The tab key will focus the vertical field, and I'm going to type in 30 there and press enter. Then the cursor returns to the select cursor and uh, you can actually grab hold of this thing by one of the corners and you can move that around. Look, we can put it anywhere we like, not locked down. If I'd have started by clicking on the origin, then it would be stuck. Let me show you how that works. I'm gonna select this thing, delete it, do it again. If I start the rectangle right on the point of origin there, um, and there it is, then uh, when I get the select key, then I can't move that anywhere, it's stuck. I can grab it by this corner, but you see it's not coming with me. Delete that, and by making it on purpose, somewhere where it's not going to get stuck anywhere, I'm going to type in those numbers again, that's 48 for the width and 30 for the height. Press enter, the select thing can actually drag this around all over the place. I'm going to put that around about there. I don't want to have it right in the middle because I want to push it into the correct position and I want to actually see when it goes into the correct position. It's up in the Create panel, there's the Sketch Dimension. I click on the Sketch Dimension tool and you see that this Sketch Dimension uh, is now attached to my cursor. I'm going to click once on the point of origin of the document, once on that far right hand corner, and I'm going to put that up here and I'm going to type in 24. You notice that that's half of the dimension that's down here, and we know that this thing is now centered up in the middle between the two sides. Next thing I'm going to do is click on the point of origin, and then on the top of the rectangle, put that out here, and when I click to place it, you see the focused field. Now, if you're like me, you've been to state school, and you don't have mental arithmetic, then uh, what we do here is we can type in 30, and then divided by 2, and press enter, and it gives you the correct answer. And so now we know that our rectangle is perfectly centered over the point of origin. Next thing I'm going to do is scroll up and get a better view of this rectangle. And what I'm going to do is put a circle here and I click on the circle tool and you see that the person now has the circle attached to it. I'm going to mouse across the, the top of the model here and you notice that as I get close to that vertical line at the top of the rectangle, that the cursor changes to a little blue X and runs along the line. If I move the mouse further away, then the cursor turns back to the normal cursor. But close to the line there, it snaps on and it's a little blue X. When I come close to the middle of the line, you'll see that it stops right there in the middle of that line. 
and you see a little blue triangle and that indicates that we're on the midpoint of that line. It'll stay there as I move the mouse a little bit and I've just got to click when that little blue X is visible and the little blue triangle is visible and I know that my circle is perfectly centered on that line. And now you can see that there's a blue focused field. If you hold the mouse still for a moment you'll see a little tool tip next to the cursor and it says specify the diameter of the circle. Those of you that understand geometry will know that a radius is not the same as a diameter and here's the drawing and you can see that on the drawing the drawing shows a radius of 12 and Fusion 360 is actually asking now for a diameter. So you'll understand what I'm doing when I type in 24 and press enter. It now has a radius of 12 and the diameter of 24. Next I'm going to click on the circle tool one more time. Circle tool is now active again and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to mouse along the bottom of the rectangle until I see that mid snapping point. Click while the little blue triangle is available and this time I'm going to make it purposely the wrong size. See I made that much too small and I made it much too small because I want to get it to the correct size on purpose and there's an equal constraint here in the constraints panel. Click on the equal button and the cursor now has the equal constraint attached to the cursor. I'm going to click on one circle and then the other to make them equal to each other. Then I'm going to click on the scissors which is the trim tool and get rid of some of this stuff. Notice that the most of the sketch is now black lines but the two circles are now blue and the reason is because of what the warning says down here that some constraints were deleted with the trimming. So what I'm going to do is get the dimension tool Click once on the point of origin of the circle, then on the end of the part and place a dimension up there and you'll see that it turns the curve black. I just press enter to accept that dimension. It looks like we've got two dimensions on the same thing but one's on the curve and the other's on the length of the line. Do the same thing on the other curve just to get a nice healthy black line all the way around our profile. The next thing I'm going to do is get the select tool. I'm going to introduce you to your first keyboard shortcut. What I'm going to do is hit the E key while I'm still in the sketch. When I do, boom, it not only closes the sketch, but it opens up the extrude tool. And here's the extrude dialog box. So that was one click instead of two. And that's your first keyboard shortcut. I'll remind you about that next week. So the extrude tool now wants to know what is the profile. It's already selected because there's only one here. So I'll keep that selected. It's going to start at this profile plane, it's going to be going in that direction backwards away from the view. The extent is going to be a distance and the distance is here a blue focus field which I'll type in 80 then press enter and that completes the part is done. I'll turn off the visibility of the origin and of the sketches. Here's the free orbit tool down the bottom here and uh, you can have a closer look at what's happening here. You'll find that it's quite a pleasant thing to do is to actually twirl your work around and have a good look at it. Save your part one more time by clicking on the save button. You've already saved it once and this will just increment the saved version by one. So we have part two, version one. Okay, we've just done it the first way. Let me show you another way of doing this part. And as I said to you, this is a smarter way of doing it. It's not going to appear to be a big advantage when we're doing this simple educational project, but when you are doing something more complicated later on, then trust me, it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache. What we're going to learn to do is use the mirror in the sketch environment. Again, save the part in 15 parts, whatever, turn on the point of origin. There it is, made it visible. Let's create a sketch on the blue and red axis. That's the Z X axis. And this time I'm not going to use the rectangle tool. I'm going to use the line tool. Begin by making a line out in space. It just needs to be horizontal. See that green tick? If I mouse over the green tick and click the green tick, then it makes the line tool let go and it's ready to draw another line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another line over here. I'm going to move the mouse until it snaps to vertical, click, and then hit the green tick to make the line tool let go. I want the select tool again. Click on the select tool and now the cursor is now the black arrow. It's a select tool and I can select one or more. And if I hold down the shift key, then I can select two or more. Then when they're selected, one and hold the shift key to get the other one, or simply drag a crossing over both lines. 
Then uh, in the sketch palette over here, we see line type, it's the first option, and there's a construction line and a center line. Click on the little construction line icon, and both of these lines will turn into a, a blue dotted line, line style. Then when they're deselected, they turn a light color brown. Mouse across the constraints until I find the coincident constraint. Click on the coincident constraint, and you'll see that the coincident constraint is now attached to the cursor. What I'll do is I'll select one of the lines and then the point of origin so that it will snap onto the point of origin. I want the, the horizontal line to snap onto the point of origin as well and be coincident with it. The next thing I want to do is start the line tool again and this time I'm going to turn off the construction dial of the line and then I'm going to mouse over the construction line that we drew earlier, click while the little X is visible, make sure that the vertical line snaps to vertical a horizontal line that snaps to horizontal and another one that goes to vertical and notice that when I've finished the line on another line the line tool lets go. Now I'm going to get a circle and when I put it on the horizontal line I'll make it no particular size and just put it there. Then I want to show you something I want to get the select tool and I could grab the corner of the lines and that moves and the circle can move as well. Now, we can make it so that that circle does not move. What I'll do is select the circle, delete it, and draw it again, but this time I'm going to find the center point of the horizontal line and click while the little blue triangle is visible. And then when I create the circle, go back to the Select tool. Uh, and then if I drag it again, you'll see that it's stuck to the center point of the horizontal line. Not exactly what we want at the moment. So what I'll do is select the circle and delete it. And this time I'm going to draw it so that it doesn't snap onto either the midpoint or the corner. I'm just going to put it somewhere else where I can be sure that it's going to slide along there nicely. It'll be easy to put a dimension on there to put it into position. Speaking of which, here's the dimension tool. I'm going to put a dimension on the horizontal line. The drawing shows us that that should be 48. Then the height of this thing is, remember we're going to use the mirror tool, so this is half of the height. And so I'm going to make this 15 instead of 30. Then I'm going to put a dimension between the center of the circle and the corner of the rectangle and make that half of 48. 48 divided by 2 if you have no arithmetic. And there it is in the center. Now then what I'm going to do is use the coincident tool to put the center of the circle on the vertical line and then use the trim tool to get rid of some of these extra lines that we no longer need. Then the dimension tool will put the radius. Notice that it's asking for a radius this time, which the drawing tells us is 12. And here's where we begin to use the sketch mirror command. And notice that the mirror dialog wants to know what objects are going to be mirrored across. And so let me select those one after the other those lines, the curve, and then it wants to know what is the mirror line. So let's advance to the next item in the dialog box and select the mirror line, which is the horizontal construction line. As soon as I click it, the selected geometry is mirrored across the construction line. And when I click OK, we have a nice healthy black outline for our profile. And you'll remember the keyboard shortcut that we have just learned, P for extrude. So there's a couple of clicks gives us the extrude dialog box. We'll type in the 80 for the extent, click OK or press Enter, turn off the point of origin and uh, save the part one more time. That's the way that I would recommend that you practice. Every time you see a symmetrical part where the sketch is symmetrical, always use the mirror and the mirror sketch tool will allow you to draw only half of the sketch that you would normally have to. So as I say, there's no benefit in this very simple model, but with a more complex sketch, that's a real time saver. So there's your first keyboard shortcut. There's your smart way of working. Come back to me for the third in this series of 16 basic tutorials. Like the video and leave me a comment telling me what you plan to use Fusion 360 for later on. Bye for now.